Welcome back to Microsoft Access 2010 Beginner Level 1. For more free lessons on Microsoft Access, make sure to subscribe to my channel and visit my website at accesslearningzone.com slash YouTube. In Lesson 8, we're going to learn how to sort and filter the data in our tables. In the last couple of classes, we loaded some data into our customer table. Right now, we only have 11 records in our table, which makes the data pretty manageable. What happens if we have 1,100 or 11,000 records in this table? Then the information becomes a little more difficult to work with. Right now, for example, if I wanted to see all the customers from New York, I could just scroll over, find the state field, and you can clearly see them here. A few more down below. If I have 11,000 customers in my table, it might not be as easy to see those customers. So what happens if the boss comes up and says, all right, we have 20,000 customers. I want to see a list of customers only from New York, sorted by last name, and I want it on my desk in five minutes. What do you do? If you're in the table, you can easily sort or filter your data to display just the information that you want. Sorting is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is use the little drop down arrow next to the column name. For example, here's last name. If I drop this little arrow down here, you can see there's sort A to Z or Z to A. That's an ascending or descending sort. So if I click sort A to Z, you can see the last name column is now sorted from A to Z. You can do that with any column that you want. So if you want to sort by company name, just drop down the little box, sort A to Z. And there we go. That's an alphanumeric sort. If you sort a column like state here that has missing values, also called null values, drop that down and sort A to Z. You can see that the empty or null values show up at the top of the list. If you sort a numeric field, like num employees, you see it says sort smallest to largest or largest to smallest. A date time field like customer sense, you can sort oldest to newest or newest to oldest. Now there are some advanced techniques with table sorting and we'll talk about those in future classes. You can do things like setting up multi-column sorts. But for now, on the home tab, come up here and click on remove sort in the sort and filter group. That will clear whatever sorts that you have on there. You can also filter your data to show just a subset of the records that are there. For example, the boss only wants to see companies that are from New York. So come up here in the state column, drop the box down, and you'll see down here a bunch of filters. There are check boxes here for all the different items that are in that list. Right now, all of the items are selected. If I check this box again that says select all, it turns them all off. Now you can pick individual items to see. For example, if you want to see just the blank records, or just the records from New York, or perhaps even records from New York and Ohio. But the boss only wants to see records from New York, so I'll make sure just that box is checked on, then I'll hit OK. And now you can see our results are filtered. You can tell that a filter is on a couple of different ways. Right here it says filtered. Down here in the status bar it says filtered. This little symbol appears right here that says filtered, or state equals New York. Even up here on the ribbon, that little guy is highlighted. That says remove filter. You can click on that to remove the filter, just like this one removes the sort. Additionally, if you look down here, these are what are called navigation buttons. We'll talk more about these when we get to forms. But you can see it says 1 of 5 now instead of 1 of 11. That's how we can tell we're dealing with a filtered set of records. Now, yes, you can apply multiple filters. You could filter by state and then by a zip code inside of that state. You can apply a filter and then a sort. For example, right now we have just our customers from New York. So now I can come over here and then sort by last name. Now I have the results the boss wanted. All of the customers from New York 
sorted by last name, so I could print this out. To print out a table, just come up to File, come down here to the bottom, pick Print, and then select either Quick Print, which sends it right to the printer, or the Print option, which lets you pick the printer, the number of copies, and so on. I don't really want to print right now, so I'll just click the File tab to close it up. Now, I'm going to come in here and click Remove Sort and then Clear Filter, and that'll put all my data back the way that it was. In fact, you'll see down here it says Unfiltered, and the navigation buttons show 1 of 11. That means I have all of my records. Now, sorting and filtering are OK for you, the developer. Remember, we never want other people to use our tables directly. There's just too much room for too many problems to creep into your database. You don't want end users playing with your tables. This is fine if you just want to get in here, maybe take a look at some records, see some things a different way, sort some stuff. That's fine for you, but not your end users. Also, you can't rely on access to save your sorts and filters in the table. So if you have multiple sets of data that you have to be able to generate these reports on a regular basis, you don't want to constantly keep coming back to the table to reapply filters and sorts. Let's say today you need a list of customers from New York sorted by last name. Tomorrow you might need a list of customers from Pennsylvania with $5,000 or greater credit limits. The next day, a list of customers from California who've been with you for at least a year. You want to be able to generate all of these different kinds of lists of customers without having to keep coming back into the table to make changes. That's what queries are good for. You can set up a query once, customers from New York, sorted by last name, save that as a query, then in the future if you want to run it again, you just open up the query and the work is already done. So in the next lesson, we'll learn how to set up a query to do exactly what we just did with the table, however the query can be saved for future use. Make sure you subscribe to my channel right now. And also, don't forget to visit my website at accesslearningzone.com YouTube for more advanced lessons and other specials just for YouTube viewers.